Hello everyone, welcome back for another podcast. So, in today's podcast, I'm going to be discussing um, a little bit about me Nicholson bench. Um, this is my tall bench, I'm going to be going through um, a few likes, a few dislikes. Um, I'm probably going to explain and show um, how I've been using it of late. Um, so, ironically, I have pretty much for the last two days been on my Roman workbench. I have actually been building a small table. This is going to be a bedside table. Um, so, I have kind of been building this thing here. I have actually released a couple of videos, um, probably since the last time I've done a podcast. So, for anyone that hasn't seen them. I did start a build, I obviously finished it, <laughs> um, on a little side table. Um, that was a two-parter, so both of those videos are released. Um, again, for anyone that hasn't um, visited um, my channel on YouTube um, in some time, I have also started doing a vlog. I think I'm up to vlog free, I think. That's just a nice short format sort of thing. Um, I'm trying to keep them like really short, um, you know, not a great deal of editing, Well, I'm, I'm trying not to anyway, um, but I quite enjoy doing the vlogs, basically it's just like a bit of an update of what I'm doing, pretty much. So this Nicholson bench, or, a, or an English workbench, whatever you want to call it, the very similar, um, there, is, there is different variations of these, um, there is some of them that do tend to have um, bracings that come through um, the legs and attach to the apron. Um, sometimes these will go at the front as well um, on the two legs, like a bit of a, a bit of a dog leg um, in scaffolding terms, if you will. So I built this. Um, this was in the old shed, which wasn't very spacey. Like this one, this is still very small but it's pretty spacey to me um, compared to what I'm used to so sadly that lay in the corner and it just got covered in junk and whatever else um, and, it, and it didn't get used it's and it didn't get finished off and it's <laughs> it's still not finished off I mean even even this edge now I can feel this edge, this is like rough sewn, I can see it's it's just rough sewn. This was probably most likely sewn with my Ryoba saw, one of my Ryoba saws probably. Um, you know, I should really get it finished, shouldn't I? But I have been using it. Um, this has pretty much been my primary bench. Apart from the last couple of days when obviously I've been using my Roman workbench. I'm always going to have a Roman workbench. Roman workbenches are cool. Um, just right behind you it's actually set up um into the um the shave horse position um obviously i've been making them um, legs today so this is a pretty good bench um it's these are really easy to build um the very forgiving i am glad i built it but i have got some gripes with it um the gripes I've got with it um, is probably more to do with the fact that I was using a Roman workbench and then I transitioned into using my shave horse workbench, which also kind of give full access um, to the underside, where obviously on the Roman workbench, you can't do that because you've got the, the apron. So I'm kind of, I'm not liking that about it. Um, same, same again, going back to that, is because I've been so used to being able to, to clamp things um, at the side. What I'm finding I'm doing, I'm finding I'm really trying to, um, you know, clamp things at the top, which, which I, obviously I can do. Um, but for me, I think personally, it would have been better if I could have got things clamped at the side. So I'm thinking maybe a little bit later down the road, um, I may alter this bench. Um, I'll, I'm gonna have to see. I think what I could do possibly would be to take one of the aprons off. Um, 
I'm not sure if I can like get you to do that. Unfortunately, I have cut into the leg. Um, so one of the way one of the way these um, workbenches um, actually work, basically, um, they're actually housed, or at least this one's housed on the inside. So it's housed. So you've basically got two sections of um, end grain that are making contact with the leg um, and also the legs sitting on top of uh, it's actually not now there is actually quite a bit of a cap there like so that's obviously shrinkage that's happened um, wood movement that's happened there just for the seasons so basically the the end grain that's hitting the leg this way actually it helps it helps the the workbench to stop racking so as I said before there is actually benches where it will have like a diagonal brace from the apron going down to the leg and obviously this is just that's going to be like super you know steady I mean this hasn't to be honest this hasn't had a, um, I haven't had any issues with this bench um, it is it is pretty steady in that sense um, racking wise but then again I haven't really done a great deal of of playing in where the, the playing and force is going forward. Obviously I've done a bit, but not to the extent, you know, that it's, you know, it's had a really good workout in that sense. One of the things I do like about this bench is the width of the bench. The width is absolutely awesome. So the width is just shy of two foot actually. I've always a bit bigger than that. I don't know why I had three foot in my head for, for some reason. I don't know why, but no, it's, it's actually, um, it's it's two foot and a quarter inch but that's quite a lot for me you know when i'm coming from you know i think the roman workbench behind you is about 13 inches in width and i think the sawhorse workbench the main top that was only i think that was about 15 inches Obviously, I did have the ply um, shelf at the back that could be removable, so on and so forth. But it, it wasn't kind of usable in the same way that this is usable. Obviously, you know, it's it's like it's a full two foot length, which is really cool. The length of it, um, again, I really like the length. The length is six foot. If I had a bigger shed or a bigger workspace. I would most likely have something a lot longer. Um, you know, I don't know if, if you are familiar with the Mortars and Tenant magazine. Um, those those two guys um, in America, somewhere in America, they, they have a, like a really long workbench. <laughs> it's like super, super long. Um, you know, and you can understand, you know, why why they've got something so long obviously they've got the space to do that and that's absolutely awesome um it just opens up a lot of possibilities plus you're you're going to be able to have multiple setups on the bench uh, which is quite cool you know if you if you're making furniture you can have like a kind of dedicated stations you know some people will have like a dedicated um like sharpening station let's let's just say and how easy and convenient it is to have a to have a you know a sharpening station you might do the same sort of thing on the bench but obviously rather than the sharpening station you might have a dedicated space where you're i don't know like a like a shooting board um portion you know where, where you just you're playing an end grain you might just have it set up there you may have a couple of benches uh, sorry you may have a couple of vices um, scattered along the along the bench again really really cool but for all intents purposes this is really really cool um i like i like it's how it is um you know it is long enough so another thing that i do like about this um is that the apron and the legs are flush so i've never had cause for it yet um but this would be really cool if I want to clamp something to the legs. Um, again, like I said, I haven't had cause for it. Maybe if I was doing a, I don't know, maybe a, 
a dovetail blanket chest and I was cutting the dovetails, you know, yay high, which I probably wouldn't do because I'd probably cut it at the end of the bench because I, I, that's how I like to cut dovetails now with my Japanese saw. But if I fancied a change and I was going to do it, you know, standing up, I could really um, clamp the clamp the board uh, to the leg and obviously to the, to the sides of, of the apron. I have actually been using the apron to clamp things too, but it's it has like it's only been the first like what foot <laughs> past the legs um i have actually got what's that yeah so that's like 13 inches i've got 13 inches from the edge of the bench itself uh, to where the front of the, the leg is obviously it's it's symmetrical both sides i did actually build it like that so one of the reasons I did build it like that, if memory serves as right, is that I did actually want to put some sort of a draw in there. Um, as far as I'm aware, this is kind of like a Paul Sellers thing. Paul Sellers has um, draws, which in essence is pretty cool. It's a good idea. But for me, because I'm using whole fast, I don't believe Paul used whole fast. I haven't really seen him use them. He may, he's most likely owns some whole fast, but I don't see him using whole fasts. So, um, obviously, because I'm using whole fast, I'm using primarily at the moment. I'm I'm using pretty much the maybe the the first half of the bench, um, you know, and I'm using I'm using whole fasts primarily like the first say a quarter of the bench that's let's just say i've only got like how many holes have i got in this we've got four five six i've only got six like dog holes in the whole entire bench i did want to put some more in um obviously i want to put some in the apron but at the same time i didn't want to go like gung-ho with it i mean I put these four in, um, the four in the line, and I feel I feel that they're kind of not in the right place. You know, when I've when I've been kind of working with it, I feel these um, these row that are that are that are running down the length um, to about half halfway point, they should have been more kind of to um, to the edge. So. I mean, from the edge, the what are these? These are like five inches from the edge of the bench to where where the centre of the hole is. And what have I spaced these out? I've spaced these out at ten inches. I've also done um, one a bit closer to where the join is. So I have got like a like like a bit of a gap here. Um, on this on the center piece um, this is this isn't a, a one like a one piece um, top it's it's a split top which I prefer and I think it's it's kind of a must because you're on the risk of splitting the top if you don't do this especially with um, with the way the legs are constructed the legs are constructed um, uh, how, how are these constructed? I had a look there, you know. I was going to say Mortis and Tenon Joints, but they're not Mortis and Tenon Joints. These are dovetailed half laps. So you can kind of see at the bottom, um, pretty much just where the, the wheels are attached um, to the legs themselves. Um, that's like a, a dovetailed um, half lap joint. And it is the same at the top. Um, these are just glued and um, nailed in. Haven't had an issue with it. Um, the joints still seem really, really tight. Um, obviously, that's what you want. <laughs> While I'm down here, you can actually see the bolts. Um, these are just butterfly bolts um, holding um, the aprons, obviously, to the legs. And you can actually see the, the the housing joints here. And if we look down the other side, you can actually, um, or you should be able to see um, a couple of bolts, or a couple of lag bolts, rather, that are um, fixing the, the top rail um, to the two sections of the bench. 
One thing I did forget to mention before when I was um, showing you the size of, it, of everything um, is basically the height of this. So there's a lot of controversy <laughs> about the height of um, workbenches, Nicholson benches, Roman workbenches, it's the age old sort of thing. So for me, um, if, we, if I'm standing uh, next to the bench roller, so where, where it is, how to describe this, so kind of my, the middle of my hip joint um, is about three inches higher um, than the bench, if that makes sense. So kind of kind of standing like like straight onto it, leaning onto it. Um, it's kind of right at the top of my thighs. So it's obviously it's not like it's not mid thigh. It's you know there's a very small portion of me of me thigh remaining that kind of goes goes into the crease of, of, of me hips at the top and um, that, that would be like the kind of the front of your hips so you, you could argue that this was too low um, I would argue that's a nice overall height for everything so kind of just to show you what I mean if we if we were going to plane on this bench, um, it's a nice height. I'm still able to, I'm still able to get some welly behind, you know, you know, behind the plane. You know, if I'm playing in something tough, like a prime example, playing in um, playing in the beach, um, steamed beach. What a nightmare that was to to, to play in, an absolute nightmare. I did actually have to give that some welly, um, you know, to. To, to get it done and in my defense all my all my planes were sharpened as well and I do know how to sharpen a plane um, but I did still um, you know it was really really hard material beach is hard material it's probably one of the hardest materials I, I personally have worked with so if you can imagine that this bench was a little bit taller let's let's just say you know Let's just see a mid mid torso. So if this bench was mid torso, I'm not I'm not going to be able to get um, as much weight on it. The thing with this is that I can use my leg muscles, but I'm also able to 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 use me the weight of me the um, the, the the top half of me upper body the weight of it, and I'm actually able to use that weight. And obviously get momentum from my legs to move that forward. So obviously the higher you the higher you go with a bench, you're gonna lose the ability to use the the weight of your top portion of your body. Um, having said that, if you bring the bench higher and you're dovetailing, it's gonna be a dream. So you know you could you could argue again that you know it should it should be taller, but same again for me, it's a good all around that. I'll do everything on this. I'll cut dovetails on this. Um, the thing with me when I'm actually cutting dovetails on this bench, what I found myself doing is actually kneeling down. I get I normally get myself like a, a rubber mat. Um, I think it's a gardening mat, something like that, and I just find myself kneeling on it with me right over so and cutting the dovetails like so you know which works out really well for me <laughs> because I'm as blind as a bat so it basically means I'm able to get my eyes quite close to the workpiece so in that sense it does work out really well for us not so great on me on my knees and my back mind you but you know it's it, it does work out that way for us what I could do, possibly, I could get something, you know, on top of the bench. I mean, kind of looking at it now, I'm I'm obviously looking at the camera now, but behind the camera is my Roman workbench, and it's just popping into my brain there looking at it. If I was to get the, the Roman workbench on top of this bench, um, you know, get a couple of clamps on it, that would actually be a really nice height for me to actually stand and cut um, dovetails on it. 
might be something I might try out in the future. Um, I'll have to try and remember that one. So when I built this bench, um, it, it was just a basic bench. It had the, obviously the two aprons, the top and the legs. It didn't have an under shelf. The under shelf was added later. Um, the reason I added the under shelf was obviously to give us a bit more storage. But at the same time, I wanted to give it um, a little bit more weight. One of the issues that I have with this is that there's not enough weight in it. Um, so just to try and give you a bit of a demonstration, I'm hoping the camera is going to um, pick this up. But I'm picking this up and I'm, I'm not even trying. Um, obviously, it has got tools underneath it. It has... It has got a, um, a power tools underneath. Not a, not a great deal, but there is, obviously, there is a little bit of weight there. One of, one of, the, one of the other good things, and it's, and it's also a bit of a hindrance at the moment, are the wheels. So when I got the wheels, they come with templates. <laughs> I followed the instructions, used the templates. Um, Personally, I feel that the wheels should have been up a little bit more. So sometimes what can happen is that if you actually move the bench, which I'm, I'm doing so now for those of you that are listening, and I'm actually moving it quite easily. So sometimes when I do that, um, what, what can happen is that the wheels the wheels of the sideways they can actually get stuck in and help to lift the bench which is really annoying so the good it's good in a the good in a sense because it gives us that freedom um sometimes i like to have the the bench against the wall of the shed where the window is obviously i'm getting natural light coming through the window which obviously helps us with my eyes because my eyes are really bad. Um, natural light is always going to be better than any sort of artificial light, in my experience anyway, um, to help you see um, you know, your pencil lines and such. I, I find that to be true. So it is nice when I'm marking out um, to have the bench next to the window. But when I'm using maybe um, the saw, me. This big fella, obviously, what I've been doing, I've been keeping the workpiece here. I've had to usually put put a peg in um, the first hole, and obviously, I'm just I'm just yeah, I'm using this saw. So I've primarily been using this saw to cut things to length as much as possible. Um, that's pretty much just to get us um, familiar with this saw to you know pretty much how, how to put it i'm basically learning how to how to use this so i am obviously getting a lot better um the thing with it as well i'm kind of veering off topic a little bit here but it's really really quick um when you learn how to use it you can actually cut material very quickly uh, with this which is always good but one of one of the things about it is Every time I want to use it, I've actually got to bring the bench out. I mean, so unless I'm marking out, I do actually try to keep the bench like pretty much how it's situated at the moment, which, you know, it's about maybe two and a half foot away from the wall. So that gives us access all the way around this bench. So, you know, I can actually play in from this side, um, the right side. If I'm using maybe my Japanese canon, and obviously I can go around to the left side of the bench. Um, if I'm just using my, trad my traditional Western planes, so I don't I don't find myself kind of moving all the way around, moving all the way around the bench. Um, you know, I do tend to stick to this side. I don't know. If I pull the whole bench a little bit more forward, I don't know if I would be, um, you know, like kind of using that 
like that end of the bench i don't know i really i really don't know so how i've been using this bench um some of you probably would have seen um me using this bench if you follow us on uh, social media on instagram or facebook i do tend to post a lot of reels like video footage of of whatever i'm doing um and some people do pick up on the techniques that i'm using or other ways i'm doing stuff so What's been my friend of late um, are these rubber mats. So these rubber mats, these are, um, well, I think the sold as kind of like, like under mats, like non under mat, non slip mats, if that makes sense. So they're really good. So if you've got wood in your sandwich, and you sandwich the mat between the the wooden worktop and your and your workpiece, you you will get like a lot of friction. So, as I said, this has actually been my friend. So, I have actually been putting this um, this square dog into the hole at the end. So it's it's obviously it's a rounded peg, um, but I've left the end square. So this is really nice. <coughs> when you're cutting kind of joints. So there's quite a few, um, there is quite a few reels of myself, um, you know, doing like um, single dovetails and, um, you know, square um, tenons, things like that. But the thing I like about this is that it's, what once you've got it in place, you're using your hand to clamp it. <laughs> And you know it's as easy as that. Um, you could kind of say I was like transitioning, or or at least somebody did actually say that I was kind of taking some of my work practices from the Roman workbench uh, to the tall workbench. And I suppose you could say I am, but um, that's super easy. I, I've had like I had quite a few people laugh at us about that, but it's it's so it's just it's so easy you know sometimes when you when you when you you're handling things and you may need to um you may need to pick that up multiple times this is perfect it's like there's no your hand your hand is the clamp so that's that's how i've been using it a lot um another way what i have been doing um is is using these little um these little dogs, these are like a uh, Veritas, uh, I think these are Veritas pups. Obviously the Veritas dogs are, are a bit longer. So I've had these for oh, years, a lot of years now. I bought these for the Roman workbench and obviously I any bench that I've got, what I'm using, if I need them, they're there. I've only got the two of them. It'd probably be um, beneficial to get a couple more, most likely. But another thing that I have been doing is that I may have, um, you know, like a, a bit that I'm cutting for, you know, maybe a bit I'm cut, cutting to length. So same again, um, you just make in contact with the two, um, the two, uh, let, let's say the, the two of them are pegs. You're just applying a bit forward pressure. And then if I'm using you know, the, the big the big saw, I can do that. Or if I'm using a Ryoba saw, same thing again, once the pressure's in, you know, obviously I've got the mat there as well, the, and the mats, the mats like being a, a real, real big help. So when I'm, when I'm planing, I am usually just going to the left side of the bench and I'm using one of those um, bench pups and a mat. And that's it, that's that's me playing and set up, that is me playing and stop. So because because I'm using the the mats, the workpiece doesn't wanna wanna glide like left to right. So if you're not using a mat, it's it's so easy for it to slide. But as I said, um the mats um has it's been absolutely awesome. So 
I use these for absolutely everything. I've been praising these mats up for such a long time. So another thing that I did do, um, when was it? Um, when I was when I was making the side table, I did have to actually resource some. Um, what did I resource some beach? I had to resource some beach. So obviously, I haven't got a vice on this um, bench, and I'll be pretty honest with you. I don't really think I'm going to put a vice on it. Um, so. Same again, I used, I used the mat and, and what I'd done, I um, actually did it on, on the right side of the bench, but just obviously I'm filming now. So basically I got, same again, the rubber mat, put the rubber mat over the edge and I used um, a few clamps. So one of the one of the good things about um, these these types of mats is that they give they give so they give so much more um, they give so much more grip to the um, to the workpiece. It's absolutely unreal. So one of the problems when you're actually using. Um, when you're using tools or the or the or a saw in this sort of fashion, most of you that have that have done this sort of thing will know that the workpiece actually wants wants to move in the way the force is going. So, if I was to use a saw running this way, um, it would be all right. There would probably be a little bit of vibration because it it, it is quite you know away from the bench. Um, but it would be fine in the sense that it wouldn't move in the clamps. So if I was using, say, a saw and I was cutting um, along the length of the, or, or, or the length, the, the, the plane, should we say, um, the plane of the bench, the length plane of the bench, um, if I was sewing in that orientation, this would want to pivot. So what this does, this actually, this mat, helps to prevent that so you know so that's that's pretty much how how i would do it i would be standing at the end of the bench and i would just be sewn like so so with with the with the mats and obviously the pressure from the clamps it it, it didn't move it's absolutely awesome so I mean, with that, that's kind of one of the that's kind of one of the reasons that I that I thought myself um, I'm not going to add a, a vase to this bench. So if I get given a vase from someone, or, or maybe a company wants wants to sponsor us and give us a vase, um, and and I think it's a decent vase, yeah, I'll put it on. But I really don't think I'll be, you know paying out my own pocket to put a vase on. I really don't think this this needs a vase, in my personal opinion, of course. So some of the things I would like to do with this bench, um, will I get round to doing them is another question, um, but what I would like to do most likely, um, I, as I said, I may do in the future if I, if I ever get round to it. I would like to utilize um, the underside of the bench a little a little bit more maybe add a add another shelf um, and add some doors add some sides to it as well you know uh, to keep things um, under lock and key um, obviously when I go away for work because I'm away from home it would be nice just to lock a few things away I mean don't get us wrong if if they want in they'll get in but they're going to have to make a lot of noise, which hopefully is going to alert the neighbours, hopefully. Um, but as well as that, it's actually going to start adding more weight. So obviously the more weight, it's going to stop, it's going to stop this from, from moving so much, which, um, as I said, it can be a little bit annoying. I could possibly um, put some sort of, um, you know, some sort of material on the very um, sole of the of the legs. Um, I have actually got some um, 
crubber, I think it's called crubber. I think I've got some crubber left. And that's just basically a mixture of rubber and coke or somewhere, it's something like that anyway, but that's that does quite a good job, um, you know, to cause friction. Um, so I might add, add that on. Another thing I would like to do is to lift those lift those wheels up a little bit more. Um, the only issue I have is that there's already holes, there's like four holes where the screws already are. So lifting it, I'm gonna be so close to the other holes. I mean, I could dowel them, um, but it still might weaken it a little bit. Unless I can move them to the left or to the right, maybe. So the, they only need to come up just, I don't know, maybe, Maybe a quarter of an inch if that, um, but it would make a big difference, I personally feel. Another thing I would like to do, um, and I probably should have had it done by now, is to actually add a beam or a, or a section of wood across the two wheels. Um, you know, put them across the two wheels, get them bolted into position. And obviously the reason for this is that I can normally access three wheels, but there's always a fourth wheel that I can't access. So obviously I can get this wheel lifted up like so. Um, obviously the one at the back, but it is a little bit awkward to get to. Obviously I can get to this wheel, but I kind of, <laughs> I can't get to the four wheel. So that's, that's one of the issues um, with this. So if I had a beam, um, going, you know, linking the two together, I should be able to get the two of them. Um, that's that's kind of really starting to get like it's st starting to grate on us. Um, obviously, not enough for us to make to to make it, but I think that's that's on me to do list. I am kind of going to get that sorted out. One of the other things um, I would like to do, uh, and same again. This this is just because um, I've been a bit lazy. I would actually like to get some holes drilled into the side of the aprons. Um, and this, this is more for me to kind of experiment um, with ho like, um, you know, holding work pieces and such. For those of you that are interested, I think the cost of this bench was under a hundred pound. Um, given that was, <laughs> that was a few years ago and it, You'd pr I think you'd probably might be paying kind of maybe hundred pounds plus um, for this material. So this material, um, what I used, the 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 longest in width I could get um, was nine by two construction timber. So as I said earlier on in the podcast, one of the issues with using this sort of material i think like this is kind of this is like a type of pine um you know it's i think it's um you know european redwoods something like that um the issue with it is is that there's not a lot of weight to it um obviously there is weight but it's not enough that when you apply a great deal of force um you will actually move it. I, I'm not even sure of the weight of it, to be honest with you. But I think I think what a lot of people um, fail to, to understand is that the human body, it's it's a it's an how how to put it, the human body is capable of great feats of strength. Um, you know. We've we've kind of we as human beings have evolved to, you know, like move move things. I mean, you know, some of the some of the things a a man can a man can, just the average man. Some of the things the average man can do once he gets once he gets the knowledge of a bit of leverage and so on and so forth. And sometimes when you're doing um, actions on this on this bench or other types of benches you are using some of those methods so the, there is a lot of there is a lot of force that gets um, put onto these benches uh, you know and they can move they will move um 
So that's kind of one of the issues. If if money if money wasn't an issue, um, you could actually build something like this out of beach, um, or or maybe even if you even if you made the the leg portion out of beach, it would add a lot of weight, a lot of weight. Um, same again. Just behind the camera, there's a shelving unit, um, and there's there's quite a bit of beach on it. Um, the beach is um, two inches in thickness, and it and it ranges. It, it's anywhere from three to five inches in in width. And how heavy is that, man? I, I could not believe it. You know, when I obviously I bought this off a guy um, just down the road in South Shields. Um, I bought it from him. And I couldn't believe the weight of it when I was when I was putting it into the back of my van. Honestly, it's it's a ton weight, um, and, and you know, getting it out of the van and bringing it and bringing it from like the front street and in, into the back garden and putting it like like putting it away basically, um, super super heavy. So I think that would be a really, I think that would be a really good um, choice. Even if you were just to do the legs, um, if you're planning on doing a lot of planing, um, it might be a good idea to put, you know, some sort of um, some sort of brace um, from the apron to the leg. Um, there's lots of examples of this on the on the internet and YouTube and such. So, what kind of benches have you guys got? I'd like to I'd like to hear in the comments. Have you got these styles of benches? Have you got Rebu? You know, the Rebu look quite good. Um, from what I understand, they're quite a heavy bench, uh, which is quite good. Um, have you got Roman work benches? What, what, what do you guys work off? Um, I, I'd like to hear in the comments. Um, I think I'm going to wrap it up today, guys. So until the next time, I shall say and speak to you guys later.